Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Racing Retro, and a happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Although it probably would anything but that, is uh, for those who are involved in uh, racing in New South Wales and also in uh, Queensland. Uh, a lot to discuss further on to the equine uh, flu epidemic uh, through New South Wales and Queensland. We have a number of special guests coming on the show to bring you right up to date with all that. And some interesting discussions uh, will emanate, I feel sure. Let's say good morning to the panel. Firstly to uh, Ron Duffersey. Ron, what did you do yesterday? Well, I certainly watched a fantastic program in Melbourne. Congratulations to the Victorians, the way they handled the situation yesterday. They put, what was it, 11 races on and packed full of interest. I, yeah. I quite enjoyed the day, to tell you the truth. Good. I've been okay. starved for a week. Sorry? I've been starved for a week. <laughs> yeah, like all of us. Withdrawal. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Richard Freeman, <laughs> happy Father's Day to you. Well, thank you, Shadow, You're and welcome. you. And uh, I, look, I was just delighted to see racing back on because I was going through a bit of withdrawal, especially this time of year when you look so looking forward to seeing the great horses. And I, I thought Miss Finland's effort to come from South Australia overnight, to travel during the night, to turn up, to race the best yeah. that's available at the moment and to beat them. I thought that was a fabulous effort and she has really made the leap from three-year-old to four-year-old standard. They go up in weight, it's a, it's a big jump, she has made the jump. She's not dominant at this stage, but I tell you what, she's very good. Can't do much more than that. And I think that's stating the bleeding obvious, everyone <laughs> knew that, but uh, I wanted to see it this spring and I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, well, yeah, you've, you've seen it yesterday, but I'll tell you, you did see it yesterday. Uh, also was uh, Alf and Andrew, who's been uh, busy all week as always. Gentlemen, good morning. Morning, Graham. Yes, good morning, Graham. And uh, I suppose momentum was uh, a key factor at Caulfield yesterday. With the rail out 10 metres, didn't seem to matter if you covered ground. But I tell you what, if you got stopped in your tracks, and normally the perfect posse, third the fence, turned out to be the worst all day. Fred Kersley's been inundated by jockey managers. They all want the ride on Morasco next week if it runs at Flemington. Damien Oliver got suspended yesterday. He won't be appealing that, and he'll be out until the 20th of September. Graham, we've got lots of news on all the uh, races and uh, developments with EI through the show this morning. We do indeed. Thanks, Andrew. Let's get into the action. But just before we do that, uh, if you'd like to send uh, Richard an email, this is where you send it? There are already plenty here, actually, but we could take a few during the show, and here's how you do it. You go to the website, skychannel.com.au. You click on the program feedback icon there, and it'll come straight through to the studio here. You can send a fax, 02945222222, or all the mail. Mail's a little slower, but eventually it gets here. There's an address on your screen. Okay. The Group 2 Memsey Stakes at Wait for Age 1400 metres, the feature race of the day, and the, here's Miss Finlay. They're followed by Tip Palm Woody. Then came Miss Finland running sixth. Nick and Nero from Maybe Better. Further back, Activation. Blue Tiger Roo followed by Falstaff, El Segundo. And Efficient is last of all. Coming around the bend. And it's Cinque Cheto from Arata Sun. Super One back on the inside. Further out, Ladder the Manor. Miss Finland coming down the centre from Tick Palm Woody. Harada Sun has got to the front of the 300. From Cinque Cheto, Super One the rail. Miss Finland out wider from Tick Palm Woody. Harada Sun in front. Miss Finland is starting to level up. And El Segundo. Gundo flying, the mighty man, Miss Finland takes the lead, Miss Finland, what an effort, a half length of Rada Sun, third home, Tick Pan Woody oh, and fourth By golly, she's a bottler, isn't she, Miss Finland, David Hayes, Craig Williams, Harada Sun, a second, and Tip and Woody at Denny Old Odds, uh, running a terrific race for third, Alf. Yeah, and Mark Cavanagh will be very, very happy with that. You can probably put a case forward here that Harada Sun will never, ever beat Miss Finland again. One did it a bit tough in the early stages, but I tell you what, Miss Finland still had to come out and go around them late in the race. Fantastic performance, both of them. El Segundo, very, very good. Nick and Nero, Cinque Cente got uh, held up. You just about now you see where Damien shifted in and caused a bit of problem there. Um, fantastic race. And uh, Harada's son, Dardo Tan Chin Nan, Darren Biedman seems to be the favourite now, just in the last sort of half an hour from Gleaming. Nashra Willis in the mix. This is because Damien Oliver's suspended. So Darren Biedman could be riding uh, Harada Sun in Melbourne at its next start. All these horses go to the Dado Tan Chin Nan. El Segundo has come through extremely well, given that Colin Little was concerned about the track being very firm yeah, yesterday. Good effort. What about Corey Brown? Is he in the mix? Has he got a commitment for the Dado Chan? Uh, you would think Lee would have something there, but I can't think of anything. Yeah, but yeah I was just thinking natural left-hander, that was all. Yep. Mm, well, Beedman's not. He rides in the left hand, he rides in the right oh, hand. Yeah. He's just, yeah. he's, he's well classed. Oh, I think he's plenty of good jockeys. But I, I, looking at that result there, you saw that Tipung Woody right on top of them there and Nick and Eero just behind them. But I think you get that in the early part of the spring. I think you 
get horses that later in the spring won't match it with the likes of, of uh, Miss Finland and El Segundo there you see in the red colours rattling home out wide. Another good run from him. I think those other horses like Tipung Woody, he, he may improve a bit, which he'll have to. And Nick and Eero, who we sort Richard. of... He is a little untapped. But the other one, Nick and Eero, we sort of... We, we know where he sits in the world, uh, but I think you get that early in the spring, and then as the spring goes on, you'll see that the cream just float higher and higher. Yeah, what is the cream now? What oh, well, I think she is, Miss Finland, oh, and I think El Segundo is. is. Yeah, on dry tracks she is. She's got a few flops there on wet tracks if there's a bit of wet weather coming. Mm -hmm. Look, there's no real flop there. There's no real designated flop. They're all going to be... We're going to assess them next time we look at them. Uh, look, Maybe I thought Efficient, better, I thought efficient was good for a two-miler. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it ran on really good. The 400 to the 200 sectional was good. Maybe better. Again, finishing strongly. Mm. It could run again next Saturday at Plumington. Mm. Okay, let's move on to the Group 3, Ian McEwen, the 1,000 metre dash and the Gold Edition, the short-priced favourite, running fourth or fifth over on the fence in the orange-green colours. Gold Edition from Husson Lightning. Then here, the Angels, our Maharaja stands out into the straight. She can't get out Gold Edition. Uh, they're really crowding up now. It's ticklish. Devil inside. Gold Edition, the fence, and Husson Lightning coming up the Gold edition grabbed by Husson Lightning out in the middle. Al Maharaja running on, but it's Husson Lightning in front of Gold edition. Al Maharaja and Dr. Nip in tuck. Here the Angels kick clear. Here the Angels is the one. Here the Angels. Here the Angels gets clear from Gold Terrific edition. performance there by Here the Angels. First up over Gold edition, Dr. Nick of Dr. Nip and tuck, Alf. I think, th and that explained part of the day with Gold Edition, she unfortunately just lost momentum at a critical stage. And let's face it, here to, here to Angels, <laughs> he's no slouch. Got the nice run, covered a little bit of ground with cover, finished his race off very well. Look, he's exciting, but I'll tell you what, um, she stuck to her guns very well as far as I'm concerned. And uh, a couple of other nice runs in the race, particularly the old doctor. Didn't he get home all right? Mm. And I'll tell you something, Lee Freeman, the Freeman family say some clangers sometime. Lee Freeman said to me this morning, here to Angels, he's a winner. <laughs> six from six. Surprised, Lee, uh, with that quote this morning. But it's off to the Group 1 Manicato. <laughs> Gold edition will go there and a new jockey has to be found there, boys. The only horse that I was a bit disappointed in that it didn't get clear daylight was uh, a little horse called Hassan Lightning. Mm. Yeah, never saw daylight. Look, uh, I'm a little concerned about the race. It's a bunch finish. I know it's only a thousand metres. Lovely yep. ride by Corey from an outside draw. Three out with cover, chimed in at the right time. There was a lot of interference behind him. A horse like Al Maharaja, it was 150 to one. It pulled its head off and <laughs> finishes finishes off like that. Just Ronnie, puts a little doubt to the form. Ronnie, you're like so many people. When a horse strings six unbeaten runs in a row, they always have more it's knockers after the sixth than, I understand. than after the first. Potential. And I saw this with. Uh, with uh, Bentley Biscuit. After he'd won, I think, eight in a row from you were debut. Potting. Yeah. I was not <laughs> You were there, there, He had more knockers at the end of eight in a row than he did at the, at the yeah, beginning of his career. you were the leader of the pack. That is not right. <laughs> and, what, all I'm saying, and I think what Lee was saying there is, look, he, he wouldn't match it with, uh, with Miss Andretti, right? And then if she was in that race, she'd have cleaned them up with, with greater ease. There's no doubt about that. Hmm. But He's a horse that finds a way, mm. and he keeps taking the steps. And, you know, it's hard to find horses with that winning attitude. Where he ends up, where he finishes off, who can tell? But at this stage, he's doing everything right. OK. All right, now let's move on to the Group 3 McNeil Stakes for three-year-olds. This is a great performance. The Western Australian Gallop, a scenic blast. It's in the... It's got a white blaze. It's right off the track, four and five deep. ...coming to the turn from Murder Jill. Shrewd Rhythm waiting for a run. He'll come to the outside when they turn in now. Pins on parade. Scenic blast coming at it. Further back then marching, followed by Hart. Down the outside, down under Boy. Scenic blast on the outside, going after Pins on parade. Scenic blast has moved to Pins on parade from marching. Nothing else from behind, but Scenic blast has got it set in front. And Scenic blast comes home to win. A half length of pins on parade, marching third. A gap then well, to Well, that's Jill. pretty good, isn't it? I mean, it's got terrific Western Australian form from a handful of starts, and it was never better than three and four deep. No, look, it, it did a very good job. But look, it's only had the four starts in Perth, and if you go back and have a look at its performances, it's coped with pressure. Yeah. And with only having four starts under its belt, you knew it was going to improve. However, there's always that little bit of a query how they're going to arrive here, how long they're here. Irrespective of that, congratulations, Daniel. He told me some time ago that he had a very, very smart one and it's come to fruition for him. Again, um, Pins on Parade did very well from an outside gate. I thought stuck on very, very well indeed. 
marching again got held up that little mm. bit but quite frankly um, how it got held up and the other one covering ground I think it all sort of holds itself in order one's better than the other and back in the field you know Hart down under boy Murdershield was better shrewd rhythm totally ignore that Craig will learn by that um, no no that was David Hayes's mistake he gives himself the the crack there David Hayes said uh, that he uh, told Craig yeah. to go back. Oh, yeah, he said uh, they crawled in front and it was uh, his call on that. Uh, so we probably won't see Shrewd Rhythm until the Guineas prelude and that's exactly where Scenic Blast will go. Murder Jill, it'll probably run at Flemington next week. Uh, Tim Martin, just he was happy with the way it finished off. Yeah, good mm -hmm. race. I tell you what, that golden slipper form, rubbish. It, it's looking a little dodgy rubbish. now, dodgy than it was two weeks ago. Rubbish. 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 rubbish you, the yeah. autumn two-year-old no. form is rubbish. This is a new... This is a new yeah, uh, season altogether. That was an arrogant win by that right. horse, and if he settles, uh, he's a great chance in the, in the Caulfield Guineas. Just got to learn to settle that bit. Maybe he was a little fresh going into that race, but marching confirmed that he was the unlucky runner in the vein stakes. But mm. go, uh, you pull out the Golden Slipper Field and have a look at it. Yeah, they haven't struck a blow yet, have they? No, no. not one of them's won. Gee. Okay, let's move on now to uh, the listed William Crockett race six in Royal Ash, and this is the, one of the big runs of the day too. It's going from last, sweeping around the outside to hit the front in a slowly run race too. Royal Ash winding up down the centre, races up now, followed by La Galoo, then Volcata, followed by Gladwell, but lengthening now. Royal Ash has hit the front at the 180 metre mark from Gladwell, then La Galoo, Antarctic Miss fighting on, but Royal Ash the favourite in front. She's too good for Ollie, a soft win, a kind ride, and Royal Ash wins a length Gladwell, Antarctic misses third, further back Lagaloo. Right. Well Alf, it's hit its straps, Royal Asher. Yeah, it certainly has, and I thought Caulfield was probably the key factor for that, and as you say, covered a lot of ground. But then again, my initial statement at the start of the show, momentum was very important yesterday with the rail out, as opposed to trying to save ground and ride pretty, because it just didn't work yesterday. However, in saying that, take nothing away from it, it did treat them with contempt, made them look second rate. Gladwell held up a little bit, got pushed around a tad, but did very well in the concluding stages. Um, Antarctic Mist came from the uh, ordinary track, I suppose, the average sort of um, Geelong synthetic, but uh, look. Oh, it's going good, don't yeah. bag that no, track. No, 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 I'm not bagging the track, but you thought the form Rubbish. was a little bit ordinary coming into this type of race, but hey, it's obviously looking pretty good indeed. La Lagoo, Rada, very good, and Bantry Boy was getting home nicely. Yeah, it was good first up. Uh, the winner could back up next week in the Dane Hill up against the three-year-olds of Flemington, or the other option is to wait for Mooney Valley, but she's come through it extremely well this morning, so wouldn't surprise that she did run next weekend. Yeah. When you said the other, made the others look second-rate, I sort of think they are. I don't <laughs> think that you can, you can beat horses that easily and that dominantly unless they are a standard lower than you and I think she's on a level with the better fillies but I don't think she's you know head and shoulders above them and and that would then lead me to believe that the, the fillies she beat weren't much good I doubt she's it tough and she's tough though uh, Richard she mm -hmm. loves racing yes yeah, she does yeah I doubted her but uh, that was the win of the day by a long way they walked she covered ground she treated them with contempt I want to see her show that brilliance over a little bit further. I'm still... And against better horses. I think she's too brilliant. <laughs> um, so we'll wait and see if she is up to the mile. You know, when she gets to a mile where she's still got that brilliance. And she took that brilliance into the race herself, Ron. Like, you know, she did it all of her own accord. Yeah. Fantastic Le win. Yeah. Lee thinks after that win yesterday that she can get a bit more distance just mm, watching it the we'll way see. she raced yesterday. Mm. Right, the uh, listed heavily handicap was now called the Dubai Quality. Uh, this was race five and Dice Chariot. Back last at the moment, but it'll weave its way between runners. Two out from the outside. Down the centre with the fuzz. Hadel McDaddle, Cephalou, and on the outside, Red Lord. Red Lord's gone up to Cephalou. Ice Chariot from the back of the field is starting to burst through. The fuzz is wider out. Here's a great go. Ice Chariot gets the split through. Ice Chariot. Ice Chariot has come from last to win to either beat Cephalou. Yeah, uh, Ice Chariot from last there, Alfie, and uh, Ruby Scent had no luck. D. Oliver at his best, tracked up with nice cover and just snuck up inside of Craig Williams on the fuzz that ran very, very well indeed. Um, oh, Dane Empire and a few horses up the front, admittedly had a McDaddle um, pulled very hard in the early stages and I know Ruby Scent never, ever looked like getting a run from third defence. But I tell you what, take nothing away from Ice Chariot, the Fuzz, and even Red Lord Kefalu 
good race, and these will go on. And will they? the winner, with, yeah, well, the winner look around will stay. <laughs> Have a look at them. It's a pack. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Andrew. <laughs> Sorry, no, he's okay. given up. He's sorry. sorry. Yeah, he's stopped now. He's no, 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 you, There's a you, link you, covering you, a lot you, of them. You're obviously making a point, so keep going, Ronnie. No, look, well, look, I, look, I kind of agree with Ronnie. Look at know, them. In a normal year, Ronnie, you'd look at these and say country cups horses. But you know what? This year, these are all the horses that are around. There's nothing. There's else. only Victorian horses at this stage, and a few from South Australia, and there'll be none from New South Wales and Queensland. So hey, they might go on to win a good what race. What from New South Wales was going to fit into that class of race? Hmm. I don't know. They'd find something, wouldn't they? Sure. Sure. I tell you what, the Andrew, only race both... down here is going to suffer is uh, Fumicello, is, uh, the Derby horse. Mm, we'll Andrew, see. they're both doing a bit of potting up here this morning, are they? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, it's not the first time that we've seen Sydney media uh, bag our racing in Melbourne this I'm not week. Bagging oh, the, I'm bang. not bagging oh, the racing. Well, I'm well, bagging well, the well, racing. Well, 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 one of those horses. Why am I bagging it? <laughs> All I can say this morning is, boys, I've got gotcha. yeah, you. Well, <laughs> gee, hang on there, Andrew. He got me a few times last week, <laughs> some of the information. <laughs> I will say there's been a lot of discussion this week about uh, races being downgraded because we won't Ooh. see Sydney horses. That definitely won't happen. Of course not. You have a look at the quality of the Memsey Stakes yesterday. Yes, well, there you go. Now, let's, <laughs> let's have a look at the Doombin 10,000 Oakley Plate winner, <laughs> Undue, in uh, the last. Then down the outside, something, anything. Undue coming home well. Orange County can't get a run. Halfway up the running now, 2.50 out. Typhoon Z out in the middle now, Undue. Satin Rose with a late run. Undue has hit the front now. Undue in front, close to the line from Typhoon Z. Undue beats Typhoon Z three quarters. Third home, Satin Rose and flying home. Oh, out beautiful wide. ride there by Stephen Arnold, as you'd come to expect on Undue at uh, good odds too. And when you consider yeah. the conditions of the race, Alf. Yeah, certainly. And that was the key to this particular event. Like, we know he's a Group 1 winner and uh, superior to the balance of the field, <laughs> but Stephen did ride him very well. Unfortunate that Stephen got uh, suspended mm. yesterday, too, for a shorter period than Damon. But look, again, if you want to rip this race apart, a lot of very good runs and a lot of unlucky performers. You know, OK, OK, Orange County, better for further. Um, <laughs> Jennings, Anna's Choice, Megadil, wonderful, well done enough. Um, yeah, good race. Anju will be nominated for Flemington next week, but more of a chance of tackling here to Angels in the Group 1 Manicato. Mm. And Stephen Arnold, he'll miss next Saturday, but he's back for the Manicato meeting. So I think that'll be a, certainly a plus for that horse going to Mooney Valley. Now, I know Actually, what, it was, was funny just before the corner, though, when Orange County tried to come out and uh, shift Anju. I oh, know, you better stay there. This won't be a revelation, but the two races where there was the most unlucky runs are the 1100 and the 1000 metre. And I think it says as much about sprint racing as it does about anything else. You will just get that in those short races. Yeah. Riding and useful features, including free tips, weightings at early speed. There's the latest odds from all Australian TABs, plus loads more. Log on to www.skychannel.com.au and check it out now.